In this video, I'll be going over the solution to scoring pairs from Code Chef December Challenge 2019. So, first observation is that we are allowed, since we're allowed to reorder, uh, since we're allowed to reorder the digits, digits of y in any way we want, and it doesn't matter if we also reorder x, and this just makes the problem easier to think about. The second observation is that in order to minimize the score of a pair, we should reorder x and y such that they are in uh, increasing order. So for example, in this pair, we should reorder x and y into these. And if you calculate this, you find out that the score is 9, which is the, which is the optimal amount. So the third observation is, so in the problem, we're supposed to calculate the number of pairs i and j such that i is within l to r and that j is within l to r. And if somehow we're able to calculate for i from 0 to a instead of, instead of from some other number, then it makes the problem slightly easier. In fact, we can do that because this entire summation can express it as a sum of four different uh, summations where i and j both start from zero. And one way you can see this is by, if you know 2D prefix sums, then it also uses this sort of uh, inclusion-exclusion formula. So first term over here, it basically counts all four of these sections once. And this term subtracts one from, and this term subtracts one from these sections. This term subtracts one from these sections. Lastly, this term as one to this section. So in total, in total, only this part will be counted once. All of these other parts will cancel out because of the terms in this sum. So now we only, instead of calculating this, we can calculate this instead, which will be easier as you see later. The next observation is that we can split the score function into the sum of the absolute differences of the individual digits. So since there are 19 digits, if you look at the constraints, um, the maximum number is 10 to 18. So there are at most 19 digits. And we can simply change the, summa change the score function to a summation like this. And here, the subscript D here represents the value, it means the value of the digit at position D. So for example, if i is equal to 3, 4, 5, then i0 is 5, i1 is 4, and i2 is 3. And then we can also move this summation outside and it won't change the answer. Next, we realize that since a and b can be very big, because a and b correspond to l and r in the, from the problem. But instead, the different values of the digits are very small. They're only, the digits can only be from zero to nine. So instead of counting the absolute difference for each pair of i, j, we should count uh, for each uh, for each pair of digit values, how many different pairs of ij will have, uh, have that digit value at position d. And multiply that by the absolute difference of the numbers in the pair. So, Notice that this part over here, and this part over here, 
i and j are independent so actually you can represent this as the product of two different terms the first term is the number of i small l equal to five such that the sorted now when you sort the data of i the digit at position d is equal to m and it's similar for the right term as well So notice that these those two problems were so similar that so we should only consider like the one of them. So let C of M D be the number of I such that I is smaller than or equal to A. And also when we sort the digits of I, the digit at position D is equal to M. Now if you look at this these two conditions, they are commonly seen in solutions which use digit DP. I included two links in the description which could possibly help with digit DP. The first link is from Geeks for Geeks and explains the basics of digit DP. And the second link is a digit DP problem from Code Forces, which is similar to this problem. If you are not familiar with digit DP, I highly recommend you to visit the first link from Geeks for Geeks to learn the basics. So the DP we will use is this. So we'll cal calculate the DP for each M independently. And I is the number of digits that we have added so far. And less is if the current number we'll bu we're building is less than the number less than if the current number we're, build, we're building is less than a here since we only count all the i which is smaller than or equal to a but then we also need to store the number of digits that we have added which is smaller than n and we also need a number of digits which are smaller than or equal to n Then for once we calculate i up to the maximum digit position, which is 19, then we consider, and we only consider those which are less than the less than the given number. Then a and b here actually mean that the digits in positions a to b, when after you sort the number are exactly equal to m. So that means we should add the value of this dp to c of m of a, c of m of a plus 1, all the way to c of m of b minus 1. So now after we calculated c of a and also c of b, we can replace these two terms with this, with uh, these two that we've just calculated. And then to find the final answer, we just evaluate this expression. And I've also included the code for uh, this. So I, ha I haven't included the details of the transitions of this DP in this video. And the transitions are fairly straightforward, and if you need to look at them, I have included a commented code in the description. Now, in observation 2, I mentioned how the, in order to obtain the minimum score, you need to sort the digits in non-decreasing order, but I haven't proved it yet, so I'll prove it here. So without loss of generality, assume x is already sorted. Then if, then if y is not sorted, then that means you can find two adjacent y such that the cost uh, such as such that the digit to the left is greater than the digit to the right. Then the cost that these two digits contribute to the total cost is equal to this expression over here.
then well then if we choose to swap these two elements the cost that we obtain after swapping is this so in order to prove that we should always sort y in non-decreasing order we should prove that the cost after the swap is always smaller than or equal to the cost before the swap and we should use this inequality here which says if a is smaller than b and c is smaller than b then this is smaller than or equal to this so there are a few ways you can improve this inequality you can use uh you can use algebra or you can or you can think of it geometrically where you put a b c and d on the number line and then it, it's really just some casework and i won't include the details here but once you, we know this inequality is true you can simply substitute a b c and d for the for xi, xi plus 1, y of b, and y of a to prove that the cost before the swap is greater than or equal to the cost after the swap. So that means that whenever we have means that whenever we have two adjacent digits in y such that the first one is greater than the second one, we should always swap it so that the first digit becomes small and the second digit and once we swap all of the once there are no such uh, adjacent pair of digits such that the first one is greater than the second one then that means the digits of y are in increasing order